Hi all, Talia from Madeira USA here. We are here with Nancy Minnie, our embroidery expert. Today Nancy will be showing us various ways and techniques to embroider holiday cards. It's not too late to start now. Impress your customers, family, and friends with embroidery cards this year or set a plan for next. As always, we love the idea of staying connected with you, so jump in, tell us more about your experiences with embroidery on holiday cards or if it's going to be your first time. Give us a thumbs up, let us know if you're watching, and of course, comment with any questions you have about today's product that Nancy mentions. So without further ado, Nancy, take it away. Hi everybody. Um, boy, I had so much fun doing this particular um, project, getting ready. Um, so as you can see, um, I've done a lot of them in the past. The thing that kind of sparked me this year was uh, this particular group of designs that were done on the... Um, the cardstock, this was a group of designs that was available from Embroidery Library. And when it once it came out, they were specific for the cardstock. I'm like, oh, I gotta try this out because I've never done it before. Um, so obviously I got every, um, there's six designs in that little packet. Urban Library, I'm sorry, Urban Threads has also come out with their version um, as well. So I, I encourage you to go find them there. Um, or maybe you have some designs right in your arsenal right now that you can use to embroider on cardstock. So before I get into those specifically, just want to kind of talk about a few of the things that I uh, that are important to create any type of um, uh, embroidered holiday card. And this can extend to any holiday, of course. Um, you know, whether it's a birthday or maybe you want to do fall ones or Halloween or Valentine's Day and I have one of those to show off as well that I kind of stuffed it in this morning and was able to create a really cute one because probably that's our next biggest holiday and certainly we can think about that. So I mean anything, you know, any kind of a cardstock, I simply took cardstock that happened to be in the office, you know, the red and the green, nice heavy cardstock. Um, I had some from my crafting, um, craft books as well and you can buy them or you know maybe you just kind of have them hanging around if you want to get really fancy you can buy the cards that have the fold already in it so they're perfectly cut and you just press the fold like that um, so before we get on to the other holiday ones I talked about a valentine one so if I were to take that one that I was talking about I had this really cute pink paper. I just embroidered the hearts on it this morning. And as you can see, I don't have to do any trimming. I could use my double-sided tape in order to create that. And then if you wanted to make the inside look kind of cute, you know, that nice little gingham in there as well, that's gonna work good too and really cute. So we'll put that one away because Valentine is not for a couple of months. So. Um, just know that, you know, this, these are holiday cards and certainly this is when you want to send out lots of them to your friends and your family, especially today, you know, maybe you're not going to be able to see as much of your family as you would like to. Um, so wouldn't this be a great way as an embroiderer to kind of surprise them? And chances are these are not going to end up in the trash can. Um, like maybe some of your other ones are and they'll be proudly displayed. Um, so of course you, when it comes to your envelopes, you got to make sure you have, you know, whatever size your envelope is going to be and need, your card needs to be able to fit into it. And I'll be honest, I had a lot of fun with these ones. I'd probably be hard pressed to find envelopes to fit them all in. Um, but I consider them artwork more so than, you know, that I'm going to send them out. So definitely keep that in mind when it comes to your envelopes. You want to make the cards so that they fit in there as well. Um, things like vellum can give a real nice elegant look so you, and you can print on that as well so it would look really pretty you could do a color you could do um, just black on there whatever um, I sliced a little piece in there to make it look nice but I used the double-sided tape not so pretty um, but I actually made a little cover for that double-sided tape on the back side and voila doesn't that look better and you can hand write or print whatever you want to do on that card there. Um, what else do we have here? Um, I had a lot of kind of mistakes here or there um, per se and you know don't think about them as mistakes think of them as opportunities um, because I wouldn't really want to um, throw any of these away so for like example when it came to this guy um, sometimes the satin stitches 
popped out. So you can't see it because it's all closed up. Um, but the berries kind of fell out a little bit. So I just took my hole puncher, my red paper, and I made my own berries. Very pretty on there. Um, so what do we got there? We got some metallic. Oh, our new, new CR metallic thread is in there. So it's got a kind of a cute little sparkle. Not really cute, but pretty. Um, Santa Claus here. Um, I was learning where to kind of cut things. And I gave him a, kind of a fancy edge. It was just one of the rotary cutters. Um, but this is cardstock as well, embroidered on there. Um, kind of cute, threw a snowflake in there. But as I was cutting, I actually cut it in the wrong spot. So now I have that line there. So just like I did with the, the dots, um, I cut out a fancy little trim here. Um, Double-sided tape, put it on the back side. Well, that wasn't very straight. I'll do that another try. And it almost looks like his suspenders on his pants, right? On Santa Claus. So it all kind of goes together. And what thread type did you use on that? On this Santa? one is um, polyester. You can use rayon thread for this, but I do find that going through the cardstock is probably a little rougher than going through the, um, you know, regular fabric. So I was finding with rayon, rayon is just quite great for fabric everyday wear and tear but I did use polyester more often or you also have the frosted mat which is polyester or you have the CR metallic which is also polyester so just a little bit of more strength a little less thread breaks you definitely have to be very patient um, you have to slow your machine down I went down as low as 300 for some of them so um, just so I wouldn't have to keep threading it it, it the the paper is a little bit rougher on it than the the uh, fabric would be when it comes to that. Um, so what did I miss here? I've got those. Um, certainly having the colored, our pens, our magic touch-up pens, I did find with this particular one um, that the purple kind of fell in a little bit. So there's a few spots there. I just took my purple touch-up pen and just kind of dotted to fill in where the letters were a little bit missing. Um, that actually let's talk about that as well because when it comes to the backing on these um, Weblon I'm sorry not Weblon Waffle is what I use Waffle has these nice little holes in it I'm gonna put on the black so you can really see it it's a super soft tear away as you tear it away it kind of pops and it just tears away really easy so I like to use this on the cardstock because I'm going to show you in a little bit. I'm going to hoop this fat, uh, this backing, use a little bit of spray adhesive. I'm going to put the cardstock on it, and it goes to the machine after that. So let me throw that guy away. Um, felt is another way that you can do these as well. Felt comes in all different sizes, um, colors. You can buy it off a of bolt, so you can buy it by the yard. You can buy the sheets, whatever works for you. And these are really great for embroidering on. They embroider really easy. They're very um, very movable. So it's very easy to put something on the back of it to harden it up. And then you simply just use that double-sided tape again and you adhere them on. So those are just a couple examples with the felt. That's a really easy way to do cards, I think, for sure. Um, I've done a lot of those in the past. Um, so our waffle is what we're going to use to embroider on because it's easy to tear away so I can get rid of it all at, in the end. Um, when it came to these berries or maybe with these um, letters here, I do like to float a piece of one and a half ounce tear away backing. So that's our easy tear, one and a half ounce. And floating means, you know, I'm going to hoop the waffle and if I have a design that has some heaviness underneath it, I'm just going to add a little more stability up underneath it. And I simply slide this up underneath the hoop while it's embroidering. And as a tearaway, it has that kind of nice crisp feel to it. And it's just adding a little more weight to the cardstock itself. Last but not least, um, when it comes to working with the felt, our Easy Weld Lawn No-Show Fusible Backing is what I would put on the back side before, to give it a nice finished edge, I'd put it on the back side of the, the felt and then I would use the double-sided tape to adhere that on there and it holds it really nice and well. So the nice thing is you got, if you're working with black felt, you got the black. 
if you're working with a white or a light color, then you can put the white stuff on the back of it. And this is just a fusible Weblon no-show backing. Um, so those are the backings that we're going to use today. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to get rid of a few things so that I can do some demonstrations. Um, let's see. And please make sure to chime in at any time with any questions or comments you have for Nancy. Like I said, she's our embroidery guru, so she's more than happy to answer any questions that you may have during this holiday season for these beautiful embroidery cards. Definitely. Um, sometimes you can do the opposite and embroider a frame. So this is just embroidery out here with the card stock underneath it that was printed. Um, so that's just a different way as well to do embroidery and create a card out of it. Um, the crafting paper that they have for, um, what is it called, scrapbooking, that's what a lot of the stuff I just happen to have on hand. Um, and it worked out great with this guy. So this, I put them on denim. I just did a seam so I could fray the edges because that looked kind of cool. A um, little um, pinking um, trim on the edge. And on the inside, I made it look very fancy with the craft booking papers there. Um, he's probably my favorite out of all the ones that are here. Um, don't be afraid of Super Twist. Um, I use Super Twist on some of these cards, um, which is that real sparkly color. Uh, thread there put the blue on blue and I think we got some sparkle going on there for sure um, so that was fun in addition to that we use I use Bermelana which is our real thick thread and that's going to be on the card here that I'm going to show you how to use so I use frosted matte for here and here and I use Bermelana up here I tried brushing it, but it wasn't really fuzzing up, but it also, but it looks fuzzy just as it is. Um, so this card here, I embroidered on a really long piece of cardstock. I closed it up, have a little extra edge there that shouldn't be there, um, but I'm gonna try and attempt to duplicate this today. So I'm gonna show you how this one particular was done. Um, I don't think it would be a Facebook Live with Nancy if I didn't do a tone on tone. So I do have tone on tone here, which made that very elegant, uh, the gold on the gold paper. That looks beautiful. Um, and there you have the crush. So I do love that. Um, I have my lint roller here because whenever you're working with felt, you always definitely have to have your lint roller because they pretty much collect everything. All right, so I am going to move these cards out of the way, and I'm going to show you how I created this guy right here. Oh, another thing I didn't talk about was the cutting mat. Um, you're going to need that with a nice straight edge and your nice sharp rotary cutter. Having your utility knife is certainly important. Always have a sharp blade when you're working with those. Um, you're going to be less likely to cut yourself with a sharp blade. It seems backwards, but it's true. I know from experience. Um, okay, so let's figure out how I'm going to do this. So um, our easy waffle comes both pre-cut and rolled. I cut this piece off a roll so that it was gonna fit inside here. Um, this is your number. So it's uh, the 335 by 335 Tajima hoop. Um, much bigger than I would normally need if I was going to embroider on fabric. Um, but because it's cardstock, I need to be able to center my cardstock right in the middle. So you just simply hoop this. Not quite at my normal angle here. Let's see. There we go. And that looks beautiful, nice and straight. You want it kind of tight. You can't really pull on this stuff too much because it's pretty gentle, it's gonna rip. So you wanna be able to hoop it nice and flat. Then what you do is I have my long piece of cardstock that I'm gonna embroider. So if you think about this, this is folded. So I'm gonna embroider right in the middle. In order to do that, I wanna give myself a straight line. Straight edge pink pen. Now notice I've got the ruler right up against these hooks, the arms of the hoop. 
so I know I've got a nice straight line if I run my pen right along there. So now I have a placement for my card stock. So we do have our two different spray adhesives, our 1100 and our 1000. This has a high tack, that has a medium tack. I want a little extra tack today, so I'm going to use the 1000. I do have my cardboard box here to try and minimize the um, spray in the air. And Nancy, what is, which one is your go-to spray? You know, I use them both, and I really think you should have them both on hand, and the reason why is because of the different tacks. Um, one's higher and one's lower. If I can get away with the 1100, which has a lower tack and a nice love of scent to it, um, I'm definitely going to use that. But like if I'm doing what I'm doing today, because I really want that cardstock to stick well, I'm going to use the 1000. Uh, the other time I'm going to use 1000 is if I'm... Um, using the 3D foam on caps, and I want to spray that foam to, to lay it down on the cap, has a little more tack. So having them both on hand is a good idea. Okay. In the box, if this is your machine or whatever, you just want it away from it because you want that spray to kind of settle in the box if you can. All right, so. I'm eyeballing where the middle is, and I can kind of let it lay over the arms as well. And I'm just lining up this with my line there, and you really only need to press the middle because that's where you're going to embroider. The design is this big, so you just want it in the middle. Now you're going to take this to your machine, you're going to embroider it, you're going to line it up in the middle, and knowing that you have a little extra material up here, a little extra paper over here. So I'm going to do this real quick and voila, here we have that pink line I used. I embroidered it, kind of flipped it around and it's embroidered. Now that it's been embroidered, truly embroidered, and you can see I threw a little bit of, of a lightweight or medium weight tear away on the bottom side. And I did that because I have the Bermelana here, kind of heavier thread. So I wanted to give it a little more stability when it embroidered on that. Once you've done that, I'm going to turn it over. And hear that popping. And there we have most of our is gone. So we don't need that anymore. Um, so now I got to get my cutting board out here. So when you want to fold paper, like thicker paper, like your cardstock, you really need to score it first. And scoring is a little bit of a, a you gotta get used to how hard to score, uh, like how hard to press when you're scoring. You also have to, um, you always wanna use a sharp blade because you can, you know how sharp it is. If it's dull, then it just might not score enough. So I know that I'm gonna fold this one this way and this one this way. So I know I gotta put two scores right here. And I have this nice little um, ruler here that's six inches long, wide, I should say. And I, I'm just gonna line it up and score it on both sides. So I'm gonna put my middle right on his nose. If this wasn't red paper, I certainly would have done um, a red nose, but it was red, so we thought we'd keep it um, true to form. We'll do Rudolph the next time. Um, so I do have a nice sharp blade here, and I am making sure that it's nice and in the middle. Let's see, that looks good. Oop, a little, little. Um, so I'm just letting it kind of rub, or uh, ride, I should say, along, but I am scoring it. If you don't score cardstock and you go to fold it where you want it to, number one, it's probably not going to score, it's probably not going to fold well. Um, but it won't have that nice clean fold on it as well. So here we have one. Here we have the other. It's a little short. We'll have to work with that. Um, so here we have a 
essentially our card that will open up into a card, a nice fancy card. Um, so I've got a little bit of extra length here, so I'm going to trim that off. This one I'm going to use my rotary because I do want to cut it all the way through. And now you can take and you can cut some off the bottom. You've got these nice lines on this mat that use them so that you know that you're um, doing a good job. Don't lose the feel of it. Do it again. Let that go. Remember to keep your envelope size in mind when you are doing this, um, and then it's going to be able to pop right in there. So what I'm going to do here is I have my double-sided tape because I make sure you fold in the right one in so it's like a normal card. Otherwise, it's going to open backwards, um, which isn't the end of the world. You make people work for it a little bit. Um, add this right on the edges. Like that. We'll get rid of those. Give it a nice press. And there you have a beautiful holiday card. Thank you um, for watching us today. If you have any questions, definitely um, Send them in now, send them in after the fact. We will get back to you for sure. Awesome. Thanks so much, Nancy, for all that helpful info. Of course, all the products used today are available right online at MadeiraUSA.com. Or you can go ahead and call into our customer sales and support at 800-225-3001 and add these products to your next order. That's all the time we have today. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment here and we'll get them answered for you as soon as possible. So thanks so much again for watching. We are Madeira USA, and we will see you next time.